So how you feel, Tell? I'm OK. You look very fit. Well, I feel fit, actually. I've... I'm a great believer in exercise. <laughs> Can't be bad, the band laughed. No. <laughs> if you actually use the phrase band. Yeah. No, I... Don't start Physic them off. Don't... I've had to put up with them for six weeks. It's not... I don't know what people think of the audience, but everybody just leaps up and down today. That's the thing to be fit. Mm. But take the turtle. In the South Sea, there are turtles that live to 200 years of age. What does a turtle do? It crawls. Doesn't it? Yeah. And it does nothing else. Now, that's exercise. No. no, 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 please. I believe in every morning. I wake up, I go one, two, three, up, one, two, three, down, one, two, three, then the other eyelid. <laughs> Fit as a fiddle and every artery is as solid as a rock. There's too much rubbish talked about exercise. Sloth is the key to life. Doing nothing, as I've written in the book. Giving things up. Yeah, seriously. But don't you even take a little gentle ex? I mean, you potter about in the garden. Well, there's nothing wrong with... What's wrong with pot? Well, no, the, the gardening's bad for you. Is it? Oh, yes. The only way to get over gardening is... For, if it's, particularly for a married man. Because hmm. women are obsessed with the idea that a man should be doing something. Wives don't like somebody who sits there. Yeah. There's something wrong. Yeah. You see? Yeah. So what you do is you buy a small plant and you put it in the garden and you deliberately pull the leaves off so the thing looks as though it's dying. She comes out and says... <laughs> and you say, I just don't know, I haven't got green fingers. She says, well, your neck's a funny colour, but that's got nothing to do with it. <laughs> that was a joke to put tell at ease. So, then you buy another plant and you say to her, will you ever go up the first plant? And she pours a little water over it now, you get up at four o'clock in the morning, you sneak out, put a chloroform pad over the first, you sneak out and you change the flowers over. So the new flower has grown. And she said, they are love in future, I'll do the gardening. <laughs> what a last. Yes! Another fine mess. And now, it's look, all there. What about the grouting and the rendering and the, the DIY and that kind of stuff? Well, you must always avoid that, like the plague. Yeah. You always keep away from doing it yourself. You don't fancy extending the house, or...? No, because, you see, the trouble is, if you have people in this... If you have builders in to do the house up, um, the first thing they will do is they will go... <laughs> now, you've lived in that house for years, you're proud of it, it's your domain, it's where your children have their nest, and you're, you're happy with that house. Suddenly, this fellow comes in with overalls, takes a few measurements and goes... And then he sighs, they all go... <sighs> Which means that for years you've been living in a gothic slum and you didn't know it. <laughs> so you've got to get well away from that. What you do, you go to a theatrical agency and find an actor who's not worked for years. Right? Or even Lionel Blair. Something yeah. like that. <laughs> get them to come round and say, what a magnificent house! You would be a fool to change it. <laughs> Leave it as is. <laughs> It's the art of getting no stress. Stress-free life. But then, why get married if you want a stress-free life? And you've just done that. Well, yes, you've got a good point there. But I, I'm, I'm very lucky. Yeah? Yes. She does, I mean, she does things her way, and I do things her way. <laughs> does she nag? She never nags. I've found the perfect, ex per 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 perfect answer to nagging. It's called half a brick. No, no, she doesn't nag at all. We get guidance. I get guidance off Tracy. Do you? But that's all. Yeah, she, she guides me very gently. <laughs> no, there's no stress at all. It's uh, I'm so happy. <laughs> it's just lovely to be on the show. It's like being on the Titanic, being on this show. <laughs> Such a quality act. What? <laughs> I never knew you had an audience and I was right. Now listen. <laughs>
Don't you take your shop? You go shopping with her now. Come on, don't tell me you get out of that. Well, that's quite easy, shopping. That's very easy to avoid that. Yeah. You see, the trouble with women is, economically, and I've said this many times, and I'll say it again. Thank goodness. They're tremendous <laughs> econo economists. You see, now, I'm very lucky with Tracy. Not many men in the audience tonight can say the same thing. She saves me every time she goes shopping. Now, the other week, she went to Harrods, and she came back, and she'd saved me £80. That's terrific. Isn't it? it only cost me 200 No. But she'd <laughs> saved me 80 You see, so I'm, I'm lucky. Yeah, I'm lucky. And you believe in letting it all hang out, don't you? You've always been one of those. Well, I was no, saying the police you're... are getting very interested in that. Sorry? I'm just saying that you're known in the business as the stud, apart from anything else. And you do... You, you really? Ha you, haven't res you haven't restricted your... <laughs> you haven't restricted... <laughs> I mean, you had a you had a small illness then. You, <laughs> you had a small illness some time ago. Now you must have had the doctor go around saying, "Look, cut down on the cut down on the fags, cut down on the drinking, cut down on the eating." You mean you've just taken no notice? Well, no, that's not strictly true. They all game with these. You see, as everybody knows in the audience, if you've had a slight illness, straight away there seems to be a power surrounding us which suddenly predetermines that you are now suspect for every germ, microbe that ever coexisted on this planet. You're going to get it. So, first of all, the grey beards come round and they look at the size of you, the weight. First of all, they looked at my stomach, which we all have to do, because that's the way it is. That had to go. They said, you'll have to die. They said, what colour? I did all the gags. It didn't make any difference. First of all, lose weight. Don't smoke. Don't drink. And breathing can be difficult because there's toxic fumes in the air. So what do you do, Terry? I don't know. You come on this show. No. <laughs> All you can do is do what you think is right, so I didn't do anything. Did I've given up the fags, I smoke cigars now. Didn't you have some technique with the doctor of the suits? Oh, yeah. Well, I'll put this in the book and I hope you don't mind me plugging the book. <laughs> no. The idea is, and this, uh, this is a, a worthwhile tip, appearances matter to everybody. So you buy a suit that's slightly too small, and they go, you are a mess. You look like a frankfurter about to burst. Right? <laughs> now your other suit that you buy fits, but it's just a bit too big. Now the doctor says, you've listened. <laughs> You've been on the F plan, you've listened, you've spent your time in the loo, you've listened. You've got rid of all that toxic waste, you are now a person. You're going thin, and to be thin today means to be healthy. And you feel great because he doesn't know that the suit's a bit bigger. <laughs> now the third suit's got to be enormous. <laughs> and preferably with a hat that's too big. <laughs> now when you go to see him, he says, my God, you've gone too far. <laughs> Get some steak and chips down you straight away <laughs> and you're back to square one. And you're, despite all you say, you're an old traditionalist at heart, aren't you? You're going to do panto this year, Jack and the Beanstalk. Jack and the Beanstalk at Sunderland, yes. Yeah. Nice. So I nice am Gano, they'll be great, we're great. <laughs> Two you, nice people, Rosemary and uh, Diamond and Leighton, a nice team, yeah. yeah so it's been a busy year with the book and the... Thing. You're doing it to avoid the in-laws, aren't you? The panto. No, my in-laws are fabulous. Are they? Oh, you're joking, yeah. I'm a bit... Well, you've got a nice show going for I don't know why she... <laughs> the wife's mother went to, to Sydney last week to see her sister who, was, who lit work, so there's a bricklayer in there. <laughs> Apparently they went swimming off Bondi Beach and the wife's mother was attacked by a great white shark. <laughs> yeah, they pulled her out all night, they worked in the hospital, but it was too late, the shark died. <laughs> I somehow had a feeling that it would.
Everybody's very pleased that you're so happily remarried and that Tracy, your wife's looking after you so well. Well, we've still got the wedding present. Have you? Good. Yeah, it's still ticking away there. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, my friend Les Dawson. Yeah.